All right, in this video, we're going to talk about elastic versus inelastic collisions. If you remember from our conversations about elastic potential energy, the word elastic means that an object is able to return to its original shape. Sometimes we call this elasticity, and it's kind of like a measure of how good an object can return to its original shape. Let's watch a video of an elastic collision. Okay, so here we have a car with a hoop colliding into a second car. If you'll notice, let's go back, the hoop compresses and then pushes the other car away. The kinetic energy of the first car is turned here into all elastic potential energy because this kind of hoop acts like a spring. Then that's turned back into kinetic energy, speeding up the second car. Because the hoop goes back to the same size, we call this an elastic collision, where all of the kinetic energy in the beginning is conserved. So let's try and write this process down. We're saying that the kinetic energy of the first car is turned into elastic potential energy in the hoop, which kind of acts like a spring. Then that is turned back into kinetic energy of the second car, or you know whatever is happening after the collision. And because of this perfect return to shape, the elastic nature of that uh, change, we can say that the kinetic energy in the beginning is equal to the kinetic energy at the end, or the energy was conserved. The other type of collision is going to be one where kinetic energy is not conserved, and this is going to deal with an object that does not return to its original shape. So an object that does not return to its original shape is called inelastic, which just means not elastic, so something that's moldable, or occasionally we use the word plastic. In this case, there is going to be some spring-like object that is not capable of perfectly returning to its original shape. Let's watch a video of an inelastic collision to get an idea about this. Now we're going to have the same collision, but with a hoop that's made out of paper. In this case, the paper actually doesn't go back to the same size. Instead, when the paper compresses, it only goes back to a portion of the original size. Here we have a comparison of the before and after sizes of the paper hoops. This means that our original kinetic energy is turned into potential here, but not all of it is turned back into kinetic energy for the blue car. Instead, we would say some of that energy is lost to heat or is stored internally in the system. We call this type of interaction an inelastic collision because something in the system had to change shape and not go back to its original shape, resulting in a change of kinetic energy. So in this inelastic collision, we start off with kinetic energy, but instead of that all being turned into potential energy, it's turned into some potential energy and then heat or thermal energy, something that we can't get back. It's non-mechanical. Uh, and because of this, we cannot say that the kinetic energy in the beginning will be equal to the kinetic energy at the end. Let's take a look at an example problem where you would be asked to decide if the collision was inelastic or if it was elastic. A 1.5 kilogram toy car traveling 2.5 meters per second forward collides with a 1 kilogram toy car at rest. The 1.5 kilogram car continues moving forward but slows to a velocity of 0.5 meters per second after the collision. Find the velocity of the 1 kilogram car after the collision. Is this an elastic or an inelastic collision? Lots of collisions. All right, let me draw this problem real quick. Okay, so after the collision, the first object is still moving forward. It's just slowed down, so I'd make sure that that 0.5 velocity is also positive. Um, and we want to find V2. So I'll start with momentum conservation. P naught equals P, or poop. And I know that in the beginning, there will only be momentum from the first object, M1, V1 naught. At the end, there are going to be two momentums, one for the first object and another for the second. And finding V2 uh, means that I'm going to have to subtract M1, V1 from both sides. So I would get M1, V1 naught minus M1, V1. And then I would need to divide both sides by M2 so that they cancel out. So the velocity of the second car is going to be whatever m1 times v1 minus m1 times v1 is over m2. And I'm going to put this in my calculator by factoring out the mass first. Um, this would be 1.5 kilograms. And then I'll do the, fin the initial velocity, v1 naught, 2.5 minus the final velocity, 0.5. Again, notice that I factored this mass out just so that I don't have to write it twice. 
and then I divide that by the mass of one kilogram. And I'm going to get three, oh, sorry, three meters per second for V2, the final velocity. Okay, now I can see if this is an elastic or an inelastic collision by finding the kinetic energy before and the kinetic energy after. The kinetic energy before is going to be 1 half m1 v1 naught squared plus 1 half m2 v2 naught squared. Uh, but the initial velocity of the second block is zero, right? So the only kinetic energy comes from the 1.5 kilogram block. So that is 3 times 2.5 squared, which is going to give me 4.68, we'll call it 4.7, uh, 4.7 joules of energy. And then finding the kinetic energy at the end, I'm going to do 1 half the mass times velocity, sorry, m1 v1 squared plus half the mass of the second object times its final velocity squared. And this is going to give me half of 1.5 kilograms, sorry, times 0.5 plus 1 kilogram times 3 meters per second. And this will give us also 4.7 joules, which tells us that the kinetic energy in the beginning is equal to the kinetic energy at the end. So yes, this is an elastic collision. Here's an example that's just a little bit different. Kid A, 50 kilograms, is running 6 meters per second with yoga ball when he collides with Kid B, 40 kilograms, who is at rest. Kid A continues moving forward but slows to a velocity of 1 meter per second after the collision. Find the velocity of Kid B after the collision and is this an elastic or inelastic collision? All right, give me a second to draw this situation. All right, so just like the last problem, we have got some uh, momentum in the beginning and momentum at the end. In the beginning, the momentum would only be from kid A, so we'll use A for this, M, A, V, A, not. Instead of 1 and 2, we'll do A and B. Uh, and at the end, you would have M, A, V, A plus M, B, V, B. We want to solve for the velocity of kid B, so we'll go through the exact same process and get the same equation, M, A, V A naught minus M A V A over M B. And solving for the velocity of kid B, I'm going to factor out the mass so that it's easier to put in my calculator. Oh, sorry, that's kid B. Need 50 kilograms for kid A. Uh, and then the difference of the velocities, V A naught is 6 minus 1. Divide by the mass of kid B, 40 kilograms. Uh, and this is going to give you a velocity of 6.25 meters per second, which would also be to the right. Okay, so now I can use this velocity to figure out if the collision was elastic or inelastic. I do this by looking at the kinetic energy in the beginning, which would only be from kid A, because kid B is at rest, which means there would be no kinetic energy from him. Um, so when I do half of kid A's mass times 6 meters per second squared, I am going to get 900 joules of kinetic energy. So that's the total kinetic energy before the collision. After the collision, the kinetic energy will be the sum of the kinetic energy of kid A plus the kinetic energy of kid B. And when I plug in the mass of kid A, 50 kilograms times 6 meters per second, square the whole thing, and then half of kid B's mass, 40 kilograms, the velocity of B is what we found, so 6.25 meters per second squared. Here, I'll separate that. Um, when I add these two together, I'm going to get 806.25 joules which means I have lost kinetic energy, and this is an inelastic collision. 
you would say that the, you know, 93.75 joules of energy that's lost would have turned into um, heat or friction between the two people, or perhaps you deformed the yoga ball permanently um, and it has dissipated that heat into the environment. Congratulations, you are done.